Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes FM, back at you once again with another video. And today we've got something a little bit different. As I'm sure most of you will know, Sports Interactive finally dropped their highlights video for the new features for FM18 yesterday. I'm sure most of you will have seen the video. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go through all the screenshots that they showed us at the end of that video. I'm going to go through what I like, what I don't like, and what I'm really excited about because there's a couple of features I am really really excited about and so let's go and have a look at the first of those screenshots the first screenshot we've got is for the brand new feature the biggest feature I think you'll all agree and it's for the dynamics which is how the team works socially at least that's what I'm taking from it you've got a couple of the big players you've got obviously Troy Deeney and Joelio Gomez up at the top there what a surprise Miles has decided to use Watford and you've got the manager obviously up at the top because he's obviously the big boss the big cheese and so he'll be he'll be up at the top but all the others is how the team works socially which I think is really going to be really interesting as most of you will, will know that have watched most of my journey man uh, I failed a lot with morale this year I think this is going to be either really good it's going to help a lot or it's going to make it a whole lot more difficult I'm tending to think that it's going to be the other way how it's going to make it a lot more difficult but also a lot more like real life uh, me as a West Ham fan, I obviously saw how squad morale and our squad dynamics can work earlier on this year, back in January when we had the whole Pyatt situation, when he was sort of being an absolute muppet and the squad all rallied round together and booted him out of the club basically and out of the secret WhatsApp group. And so I think that's what this could do. This could lead to situations like that, which could really help with storylines and um, with things of that nature this year. So I'm really excited for that. Let's go and have a look at the next screen. And that's again just still showing about the dynamics. It's got the different social groups and this I really like because it's got all the big players who have been at the club for a while. They're all in the one group. And then you've got a secondary social group A, which looks good. I'm hoping, because they've got a social group A, there's a possibility if you've got players from a few different nationalities, that you can have a social group A, a social group B, and maybe even a C, possibly, depending on how far they've gone into it. And then I do like how you've got the others who don't really fit into any sort of group poor old Will Hughes just joined the club and he's not fitting in with anybody as of yet uh, neither success he's not being very successful at getting mates but um dus and yeah so I'm really liking the look of this and so this is going to make it a lot easier to tell if you decide to sell Troy Deeney which why would you if you're a Watford manager but just in case you do you're going to know it's probably going to upset all of them players in the top social group and maybe a couple of ones trickling down into the other ones because he's so influential I'm not quite sure what the two yellows mean I think I'm guessing if we go back to the previous screen they'll be the ones that are the team leaders and the other ones are ones who are just middling about I think I'm not too sure but I'm guessing that's what it is because cleverly is the only white one and he's obviously the one who's highly influential so yeah yeah looking at it now that's how it works so that'll be quite interesting quite an easy way to be able to work out who's where on that tree so i'm really excited for that i think that is going to be really really good and on the next screen it's another newest feature it's the medical center looking very good here which is again something I struggled with a lot and obviously being a West Ham fan I know all about medical centres Andy Carroll and all that jazz and so this could be good because it tells you in one screen how in how injured somebody is is that even a thing but uh, what what match load they should have what their susceptibility to injury at the current time is and also I like the bit on the right with the body status so you can tell like what part of their body is injured because sometimes this year you've had messages coming up and they've said oh so and so's injured their posterior anterior ligament or whatever and it's like 
what the hell is that? It has been at times, you've, you've had to be a doctor to understand what part of the body is messed up at the moment. So I do quite like that. I like all of this. I like how they finally bring in sports scientists into it. Because as has, was, as has been said in the previous FM video, how it wasn't really used that much. So they finally brought it in this year. And also a few things I've just noticed up at the top. Risk assessment, that I quite like. That's new. Current injuries, I think is on the next screenshot, which is a list of all year injuries. Oh no, it's not. But that's the injury history. But I'm guessing current injuries is going to work pretty much the same way. How it's going to tell you all the injuries you've got at the moment and whatnot. And on this screen, you've got all your injury history, which is really good because... As I've seen a couple of people say on their reaction videos, uh, you'll be able to tell if you've had more injuries this year, if you had more injuries last year. So that's going to be something really good as you get into being at a club for a few years. So you know whether to work on training, whether to get better coaches in, whether to not play somebody for as many games a year. So again, being a West Ham fan, this would be where you'd work out how to manage the likes of an Andy Carroll or the likes of a Marky Noble, now his legs are going a little bit. And so you'd go on and you say, oh, I played Andy Carroll 30 odd games last year and he picked up four or five injuries. Okay, I'll cut that down by five or six games, see if I can work that out. So I really, really like that. And also it tells you how, how you compare against the rest of the league. So that I really, really like. So you can tell if you've got more injuries than most of the other people. And you can compare yourself against the big boys. So I would guess the bigger teams won't have as many injuries because they're going to have the best physios, the best sports scientists, the best medical team. So it'll be really interesting to see how your club can sort of compare against them. And so let's go and crack on with the next screen. And that is the brand new, well, I say brand new, it's a new tactic screen. As a couple of people have said, it's a little bit squashed. I'm hoping on bigger monitors, not that I have a bigger monitor, but I'm hoping on bigger monitors it looks better. Because there, I don't like it. I don't, I like the main pitch bit, how it's all different colours. I'm guessing that means you're not going to be covering that much of that part of the pitch. That's what I'm hoping it means. That's what a couple of people whose other videos I've seen, they've said it means. Because if you can see, you've got the green bits where the wingers are, and they're bright green, so I'm guessing that's because that you'll be covering most of that, that part of the pitch. But the red bits, they're where you might be able to be attacked yourself. So for newer players, and well, even for people like me, who've been playing it 20 odd years, that should help you work out your tactics, work out where you should put your players. But I'm, I'm not sure why they've decided to put the tactics bar on the right hand side and not up at the top. I think quite quite early on, I'll be looking for skins that have that back up at the top, if that's at all possible. I know nothing about skinning, but I should think that is. So I can't see any real reason why they would have put that there. Because it just looks squashed, and I, I use Loki Doki's squad view at the minute. And that just would not work on this particular screen. I'm hoping it will still work on the squad view. But on for this actual one, where you, have, where you try and see all the goals, all the average ratings, and all everything like that, doesn't seem like it would work there. So I hope I can get it so someone puts that tactics bar back up on the right hand side. And also, one thing just before I forget, lines. Northman, I think it was, no, Dr. Benji it was who mentioned this. Lines are back. At least that's what it seems to suggest by the bit in between the fullback and the winger. We've not seen lines in 10 years in FM. I'm hoping that's what that means. That we might finally be able to say to someone, you run over here, you run over there. And because that'll be really, really good. Um, I did use I did use, use a lot use the lines all the time back when they was in the game. So if they're back, that'll be really, really good. And so let's go crack on with the next screen. It's the scouting. And this is something, as somebody who's only just started doing lower league management this year on FM, this is something I am really excited about. It brings a whole lot more realism 
to the game because as you can see if you start off as a lower league team you obviously buy the Skybet League 1 package or the, I'm not quite sure why they've got a package just for League 1 and then they've got League 2 sort of just jumbled in with the Championship and League 1 and League 2 I'm hoping that's something they might correct and just give you a package just for League 2 but I, I don't know I don't think it'd be that big a deal but I do really like this how you're actually going to have a proper scouting budget because that is what every team in the world has you hear it all the time lower league managers saying oh we just haven't got the budget to go scout so and so over here or Jose over there and so this is going to be really good and it's going to make it feel a bit better when you can go from being down in League 2 then to managing up in the Premier League or abroad and you can see the difference in players you can scout I'm really really going to enjoy being able to use this and being able to budget my scouts so that's really good and the next screen is what looks like a scout report well it is a scout report and it's got it all very nicely in one screen I really really like that it says you've got obviously how much transfer budget you have how much wage budget and it tells you your scouting knowledge on that screen the actual scout report doesn't seem to have changed too much I don't think not that I've looked too much at scout reports this year as again most of you who have watched my series will know but it says here uh, I observed that David Chesse played for 56 minutes as a right back which I think might be a little bit different I'm not sure I don't think it is and I believe Chesse would be a useful signing and so quite happy with that and it tells you obviously the same current and potential ability I like how it's all there just nice and neatly in the one screen and the next one is the transfer centre again a lot more cleaner a lot more easier to look at it tells you who you've made an offer for what position they are it tells you it on the pitch and also what positions they can play I like that rather than at the minute you've got the list I think it is where it says like obviously DR, DL DC if they could play all along the defence but it doesn't tell you what their best one is on that screen you have to click into their profile and then maybe do another couple clicks depending on what skin you've got so I really like that how it tells you for that player up at the top Sebastian Prodel how he's a central defender that's his best one but he can play right back and he can play right wing back so I really really like that and so that's all the screens we've gone through hope you've enjoyed that video uh, let me know down below what features you're excited for for FM18 and also let me know what plans you've got for it what teams you're gonna be going for and what are you excited for and now I think just as a little bonus treat for you guys at the end of this video those of you that are stuck with us through all the journey man and have stuck with us through this video I'm going to reveal my plans for FM18 for the main game not quite sure what I'm going to do on the beta but that's only going to be a couple of weeks but the main game I'm going to be cre creating my own club and it's going to be called East Ham FC I'm going to be putting them back into the bowling um, with all the troubles and all the problems the West Ham fans including myself have been having with the ownership and with the new stadium I've decided to put East Ham FC in the conference south and then try and build them up all the way up from the conference south up to the Premier League try and do an MK Dons type thing and so I hope you guys are going to be excited for that I'm going to have more details about that coming out over the next few weeks until the main game comes out and so, uh, with everything that's been said, I've only got one thing left to say. Please subscribe to the channel if you're excited for the new series. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up down below. And just one more thing, I am Bad Jokes FM. I am out.